we've been talking about two types of people, messy people, not messy people, shoppers, not shoppers. I think Tom will tell me that I'm like too optimistic. Oh. Like overly mm -hmm. optimistic. And yep. then like him and Diane are like the realists. I just right? naturally see, grounded. I just naturally <laughs> see what's lacking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep, so here we go. But let's talk about happiness, whether you're an optimist or a glasses, like it, it actually is half empty. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that coming <laughs> up next. Well, hi, I'm Dawn, along with my twin sister, Diana. She's a pastor at our church, and so I, quite a, I guess before Christmas, I said, hey, do you wanna do some kind of spiritual videos on Sundays yeah. with me. And so we did it and then you guys said, please keep going. And so it has been our complete joy um, to be here on Sunday mornings with you. It's so fun because we don't talk about our faith during the week. So if that's not for you, just join us during the week. Not that it doesn't impact every area of our life, but um, we're just trying to reach as many people as possible with the message of simplifying because how powerful is that? Mm -hmm. And so it is fun now on Sundays just to get to like be real real with you. I almost yeah. feel like we get to talk a little more, I don't know, intimately with you on Sundays. So it's and fun. it's just fun. It's, it's really like, let's fun. just have coffee, talk about like yeah. real stuff and, and we're yeah. all in it together. And so we love your comments. We love reading them. We love your encouragement, hearing the things you're going for, or even the struggles you're facing right now. So thank you for sharing those down below as well. I wanted to mention this week, uh, the World Happiness Report for 2019 has been released. Did Good. you know that? <laughs> and it's fascinating. Um, it's probably confirming a lot of maybe some of the things you might assume about where we're at as a culture. It, it looks at the whole world, um, but then it breaks it down by nation. And um, probably not a surprise that the U.S. is struggling a little bit in the realm of um, sense of well-being. You know, happiness sounds kind of superfluous, but a uh, sense of well-being is really yeah, what they're measuring. Important. And so um, we've actually been declining in the U.S. since about 2010. So in the mid-1990s, uh, happiness did go up for a while, and then um, at the beginning of the century, but then especially since about 2010, 2012, it's been declining again. Um, there's some parallels that you can draw. One of them would be the smartphones. Foam. The smartphone uh, started becoming a mainstream around 2010, 2012, and especially for adolescents. And so um, they're studying kids a lot more because they're really, you know, they're, we're seeing a rise in anxiety, we're seeing a rise in depression and obviously suicidal uh, tendencies. And so, I mean, super serious things that we're experiencing um, as a culture. And so that they've really been studying teenagers and what they're finding is it's kind of two pronged. Sorry, this is super serious and heavy, but I, we have hope. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have hope for you. Okay, um, and so it's two-pronged. It's Part of it is when you're on a device or on a digital media, you are um, not doing things relationally with other people. So kids, what they're finding is compared to 20 years ago, they're spending about an hour less per day in social engagement with their friends. Hmm and they're isolated during those times with digital media. And so, um, and they're also sleeping less. And also just, you know, of course, going outside and playing less or, you know, participating in outdoor activities. So sleep activities and social engagement are all things that actually raise your levels of well-being. Sure. You know, you feel connected in a part of a community. Yeah. Um, you're getting the rest that you need to function. I mean, who of us isn't like not our best when we don't get sleep. Right. So there's that side of things that when we're on digital media, we're not doing things that actually help to raise um, our overall health and sense of well-being. Um, the other aspect of it is what we're consuming tends to really war with our sense of um, you know self-worth and identity because you've heard this so many times we're looking at everybody else's perfectly curated yeah. photos and story of their life you know yeah. like i heard one person say it's like going to a museum like whenever you're on facebook or instagram you should yeah. kind of think of it that way this has really stuck with me because you're seeing perfectly curated artwork about what's best yeah i mean i totally did this yesterday i got the cutest picture of adley we were just sitting out front waiting for daddy to get home and she had her curly hair was flying everywhere and she's smiling and so we took a picture and i had to post it to facebook and 
Oh my goodness, I know. Like it was like I was like, I want to share this cuteness with the world. Yeah, it will give right. everybody a smile, you know. Yeah. And so I know, like this is this is the world that we're living yeah. in. And so, okay, so here's where it, what it really comes down to. It's called the Easterlin paradox, if you really want to know. Okay. And what it's telling us is that as um, income goes up, sense of happiness and well-being actually goes down. It it makes no sense, right? right? That's what they're saying. Like in the U.S., uh, per capita income is up, violent crimes are down, and so overall, like safety and security in life has actually increased, but people are unhappier. So that's where I feel like we have the opportunity to really be light. Really, what it comes down to is managing our appetite, and I know, like that's hard on every front i mean yeah. it was even going so far as to call us an addiction society yeah because if it's not food it's media it's you know different pleasures Shopping. and everything yeah. like that and so i feel like we have an opportunity to really like manage our appetites and for some of us we're like you know what that's me i'm consumed i don't know how i've gotten here but i just i need to feel a part of what's going on it's a habit at this point mm -hmm. you know i have a friend who doesn't even realize that they're picking up their phone and like checking an email and everything like just total habit and so you know one thing that we've done is on our phones like with the new screen time stuff and everything you can actually block out times where like so we have it blocked out from six to nine so all of our social media apps go kind of dark yeah and if you want to use them you actually have to put in your passcode or you could even have one that you don't know um we just know it because it's it's more just like a check and balance and awareness. like it's like yeah i'm like oh have you seen dawn's latest video you know and we're like oh we have to put it in like okay is it and it it causes you to stop and be like yeah. okay is this really how i want to spend a little bit of time that we get together right. after adley goes yeah. to bed or you know and so so for some of us we have to just start there and start managing our own appetite and mm -hmm. like okay so what's something that i can put in place to really help myself or Oh my goodness, I think what's even better is not having it in your face before bedtime. Because we again, we know these things, but yeah. the, the screen light, it keeps us up and everything like that. Read a good book. Um, if we're doing pretty good there, now we can help our kids manage their appetites. Yeah. And I know this is something that you've kind of developed with your family. Yeah. Well, and I was so surprised when we were in Connecticut at the health conference that one of the stats that was shared with us was that like, it was like two thirds of kids, teenagers would not want their parents to know what they're doing on their phone. Mm -hmm. And so it did just reiterate that we have times at home where we have media and we don't. And that's what we do yeah. is in the morning there's an hour where the kids can be on screens and then again in the evening there's uh, 45 minutes. So we just have those windows. And so I hope that with your kids too, especially once they get older and have their own phones, that you, you're you giving them that break. That by taking their phone away, they might not like it, they won't like it, but that you're letting them get away from it all. Yeah. Because we can't expect them to manage yeah. it on their, if we can barely manage yeah. it, we can't that's too much to ask them to be responsible with their yeah. devices. And so so we do hope that you're having energy around helping them with it. Well, and this is interesting. They, they sent um, a bunch of people out to dinner and half of them they instructed to be on their phones and checking in and half left their phones in the car and just were present in the moment. The enjoyment for the group that, we know this, you know, yeah, like yeah. But the enjoyment for the group yeah. without their phones was so much higher. Yeah. They were present, they were interacting, and, and even 58% of teenagers said that they know they have a problem. Yeah. You know, so how can we help them? Yeah. But I hope too that you're finding as you're simplifying your house, mm -hmm. I feel like so many of these things have just come into balance with yeah. not needing to buy things, with having the space to eat healthier, to feeling like, oh, my life in front of me is really good. I don't need to look on Facebook what other people yeah. are doing. And so, yeah. Um, so that has been one of the biggest things for us too, and just uh, just a good check of where our spirit is at too in regards yeah. to you know our possessions. But also don't believe the lie that your kids or your spouse or other people don't want to be with you. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like that's seeping in. Like, oh, yeah. my kids, they want to be on their devices. They want to, yes. you know, and I, shut it down. It'll be a week of tantrums, but then I think you're going to find oh, yeah. they want to be with you. They want your approval. They want, they, that's where they get their identity is from you and your family. And mm -hmm. so, and even if you have a non-traditional family, like yeah. give them what you have. They really will treasure it. So Yeah, no, I think that's really good.
All right, so we're with you. We're all in this together, and I'm going to pray for us now because I believe the Lord is in this as well. So, Father, I thank you. Thank you for giving the, us uh, just the energy we need right now to manage appetites, Lord God. If it's grace to start with ourselves and with our own devices, Lord, or if it's to have the courage to start making changes in our family, or if it's even just the wisdom um, of how to help other young families and how to come alongside in our, our neighborhood or our church, that you would guide each of us. And again, you give us the grace and the wisdom that we need. So I bless each of us, Lord God, to find contentment and happiness in you, Lord God, and to be present with others in our lives, our families, and our neighborhood, and our community. So thank you. We bless this time together now in Jesus' name. Amen.